Hello class, hope uh, this message finds you well as always. I don't think I'll ever say I hope this message finds you unwell, although that might be kind of funny to say that at one point in time. But no, it's not. It isn't funny. I hope this message finds you well. So uh, I recently, I guess my a lot of my uh, videos to you have been about like the future, the future, where we're going. And, and I saw something here uh, that was, I think it was kind of interesting. It also shows uh, you how science interacts with other fields like engineering and it eventually goes to things like technology or art, uh, in this case kind of art, uh, but I, I'm sure there could be other applications for this. But it was uh, an accidental discovery uh, that, that uh, they could use light to control the uh, materials, the plastics, optical properties that by using light uh, they can make the plastic appear more blue. and. In doing this, they, they even went and and uh, printed sort of a, a starry night kind of looking thing using uh, 3D printers. And 3D printers, this is, uh, of course, an up and coming uh, technology, and many people have this already. I mean, and and even certain scenarios like um, they've been 3D printing bombs, at least the shell casings for the bombs in, in uh, Ukraine Russia war. Uh, so it's, I mean, there's, in, there's even applications there. I, I've used 3D printers before too in, in art. Uh, I, was, I was curious about, um, so there, there's something called the lost wax method of doing bronze sculpture. And, and I, I tried using the, instead of using wax, I used the, um, a 3D printed uh, thing and I was able to make a, a nice minion out of that. So I guess a, a 3D printer could be used then using plastic to, to make, um, uh, bronze sculpture you know so that's that's a cool thing there you know with art uh but this one here uh it was just discovery uh a serendipitous discovery as as it's said here and uh so the uh that it that the light uh could change the uh cross-linking photonic copolymers so in the light controlled reactions to make 3d structures so you can basically, uh, I, I guess, I, it's not said in the article, but I'm, I'm guessing then by context that the original plastic is kind of yellow hued and then they were able to make it look more blue uh, by using this uh, controlled reaction. And I can even see some greens in here too. So uh, the, these colors, we're not talking about the whole rainbow of colors here, but uh, we can talk about a, a yellow, green, blue gradient kind of thing and, and this is interesting I, and this is really interesting and, and uh, so then you can start to it, to do a 3d uh, color gradients using a printer so uh, this is uh, quite fascinating and, and like they've already said here for art but I mean I'm wondering what else could be done with this uh, I mean uh, it will be interesting to see what uh, applications uh, will come from this. So this was this is the science phase. We've kind of discovered something and now kind of looking for a use for it. And, and this is not the first time uh, that we found out that uh, using certain chemical reactions can alter the optical properties of things. We're we're a little bit better in this day and age because uh, our technology uh, we're able to refine things. We can see things on a nano scale. So uh, if you know some things about art history. Uh, there is in in, the, in Gothic architecture, especially in the the rose windows of, of cathedrals in Europe. Uh, well, for a while there was a color they couldn't quite reproduce. It was a pink color, and it turned out to be gold nanoparticles. And uh, you can tune the color of gold nanoparticles in, in either in solution. We can do them in solution, or you can do them in glass. And of course, they were doing it in glass, but uh, they figured out uh, just, I don't know how they figured it out, uh, as much of the, this knowledge was lost. And it was lost for a long time until, until around the, the 1990s, early 2000s, that we started to discover that we could tune gold nanoparticles to get a certain color. It was, the, it was this pink color that they can figure out. So you can, get a, you can tune gold nanoparticles to turn either pink or purple. Kind of, it's like a, it's like kind of a, uh, I guess I should say violet. Purple's not a color. Violet. So purple is a combination of green or a red and blue. So violet is the actual color. So excuse me for, for that. We, me humans, though, we can't tell the difference. 
uh, because of our the way our eyes work, because uh, red and blue or violet activate the same uh, signals in our um, in our cones. So we as humans cannot tell the difference, but uh, uh, instruments can. So, but anyways, uh, so. I thought this was interesting. It's kind of kind of cool. Maybe some of you have played with a uh, with um, some three three D printers, and uh, now uh, with that, um, you we now have we're starting to have the ability to change some of the colors. And as we're seeing this, maybe we'll find other color gradients that we can get from different materials. So it'll be interesting, and. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what, what happens in the future and, and what applications they have for this. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, it'll be interesting. I've seen lots of people do 3D printers to make things like um, like face masks for using various characters. I mean, although printers uh, are eventually going to be uh, used quite, I believe it'll be used quite extensively in, in, uh, in space travel and human colonization because the... Uh, these printers will be able to make things in certain shapes that would be uh, that, you, that you don't need a manufacturing facility to make. So, uh, and there's even talk about doing food printers. So, uh, to, to use various things to to make uh, you know dishes to eat, how we can cook in the future, if you uh, that kind of thing. But that's you know looking beyond looking beyond the future. But here's here's one. Here's a one small step in that direction, uh, that this discovery that we could tune the, the blue uh, color of something by a certain chemical reaction in the plastic. So I hope you enjoy the articles. Uh, you know, it's kind of in a way a small discovery, uh, but we also don't know where it's going to go. And it's, it's interesting, you know, and it's something we studied, and it's interesting to see what kind of applications they're going to have from it. We, we don't know uh, what's, what's the application going to be for now, but, you know, it's part of the scientific method. It's about part of uh, how science uh, and and um, society interacts. So, like I said, it'll be interesting. And uh, as I said, uh, starting off, I hope uh, this message finds you well. If you are unwell and you need help with anything, please feel free to reach out to me. I will always do what I can to help. Okay? So, all right, well, have a nice rest of your days and weeks, and I will... Talk to you sometime soon. Aloha.